I want to welcome you all to the TLC and to this session, Let's Get Critical. I almost sang it, but I didn't. Exploring the importance of critical thinking in both instructors and students, presented by Dr. Sherry Ketchum. And we're very happy to have uh, Dr. Ketchum here today for this presentation. Um, the chat will be open. We'll be kind of ke keeping an eye on that. And um, I'm just going to cede the rest of the time to you, Dr. Ketchum. All right. Sounds good. So my email address is here. I'm going to make reference to a few articles. If anybody wants to read them, then feel free to contact me and I will send them to you. And um, I also was uh, considering singing the song to open, but um, the title is Let's Get Critical. And this is designed to hopefully have a little bit of a conversation, but it will mostly be me talking about the ways that I've been thinking about critical thinking. Um, critical thinking comes up a lot in my life because, you know, we assess students all the time using the discussion grading rubrics. There's a whole segment on critical thinking, and then there's a segment in the peer reviews that we do of instructors or the instructor quality reviews. And yet, I feel like I have very few conversations with people about exactly what critical thinking is and how we should assess it in both instructor performance and in student performance. So that's what prompted me. In fact, I actually did a series of webinars for all of my associate faculty who teach COM 200. That's the class that I teach and COM 200 just for background is interpersonal communication and it is one of the ways that students can meet the requirement for the GE competency for uh, communication. So um, I did a series of webinars where I went over every element of the peer review that we use for instructors. So this is kind of an offshoot of that, but I've, I've added some additional information. So to start, I'm curious who's here, and you can just say in the chat box, if you are an instructor, an administrator, if you are a lead instructor and you do peer reviews, I'm calling you an instructor administrator. If you're a course, if you're an instructor who also does course design, I'd be curious to know that because I'm, I'm curious to hear what role critical thinking plays in your lives if you just use it to do your student evaluations of discussion posts, if you use it at all doing the peer reviews. Okay, so the, an, an adjunct would be somebody who would primarily do it in their evaluations of student uh, discussion posts. Um, the other way I would say it would come up is that you are often assessed or you should be assessed on your um, fostering critical thinking is the word that they use in the peer review, course lead, and right, yeah, in peer review and mentoring, okay, philosophy. Okay, well, if you're a philosopher, then you might just think about it generally. Adjunct instructor, okay. So mostly, okay, and then Beth, okay. Yeah, so, so we're all here, and so we all have to think about critical thinking on some element, and one of the things that I'm going to argue throughout this presentation is that I think it's really important for us as instructors to be good role models for students and to kind of incorporate critical thinking elements into our interactions with students in multiple areas of the classroom. And I'll talk about that more as we proceed. All right, so, you know, one of the things that I tell my students frequently is that you are learning to speak in an academic voice. Whether or not you wanna be an academic is, um, Beside the point right now, you're in an academic institution where you have to speak with an academic voice. And one of the primary things that academics do is support themselves with experts who have done research on the topic and can back you up in making the points that you're making. So I figured that Einstein was the, one of the most important people I could use to back me up in my point about the importance of critical thinking. And though he doesn't use the words here, he's getting to this idea by saying that education is not the learning of facts, but the training of the mind to think. And that's why I think critical thinking is so important. It's not about, it's not about memorization. It's about having a certain approach to thinking about ideas and making claims that are based on evidence, making claims that are based on logic. 
So at Ashford, we actually have three different ways that critical thinking is defined. In the general education competencies, we have a definition, and then in the grading rubrics and in our peer review. So I'm going to go over all three of those definitions and then try to find areas where there's overlap between them. I also think critical thinking is crucial for the intellectual development of students, and I think that it's actually important for democracy for us to have critical thinkers. So for, for me, it's about helping to create an informed citizenry and encouraging students to think about where their ideas came from, how they got them, and assessing the ideas of others who are trying to convince us to support them in various in political endeavors. So to me, this is very important right now, <laughs> given the political climate. I think it's very important to be able to assess where other people are coming from, identify their values, identify the evidence that they're using to support the claims that they're making. So I see this as important, you know, as a, as a member of a democratic community. So outside of just being able to make sound arguments in a classroom, I think it's really important. So generally critical thinking, critical thinking is a central part of higher education. And if you go to any academic institution, you will find somewhere in their general competencies, a goal of creating critical thinkers. So this is not just something that Ashford believes in, but it's something that we generally um, expect from someone who has a degree. I also think that it's an important part of being a valuable employee. We, people who look for, val, you know, people who are good employees are good at solving problems and that they can show that they're solving these problems based on evidence and rational thought. So I think that we can talk to students in, about critical thinking in those ways as well. In my experience, I see that instructors struggle some in both the ways that they assess critical thinking in student work and how to foster it. So I spend a lot of time in my peer reviews um, giving instructors advice about how they can enhance critical thinking in their interactions with students. So the goal today, and I know I've already just spent uh, almost eight minutes just setting this up, is I want to just quickly just define critical thinking, and I'm going to go over those slides fairly quickly. And then I want to address some places where it happens and how we can hold both students and instructors accountable and why I think it's important to do so. So just a little bit, and um, again, I'm going to go through these quickly because uh, I, I speak too much. Um, so early definitions, Francis Bacon, as early as 1605, it said it's about the desire to seek, the patience to doubt, fondness to mediate, slowness to assert, readiness to consider, carefulness to dispose, set in order, and hatred of every kind of imposture. And these are just some of the things that I've read about recently. I've been reading a lot about critical thinking because I did this to prepare for this presentation and the other ones I've done. And then a more modern definition, which I think is the most important part, is thoughtful consideration of problems and subjects. And these are usually informed, and we have to be informed about the, method, the methods of logical inquiry and reasoning and have a willingness to apply those methods. So in our instruction, we should be teaching students how to do this. Now, I know in my um, description of what I was going to do today, I mentioned two things that I'm not actually going to be able to cover very much. So if you came here to hear me talk about that, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to spend that much time um, with those two themes. And one is the way that race and discrimination are actually have been shown, at least in a couple studies, to discourage critical thinking. And um, there was a study of all, you know, a lot of universities do exit exams where they have students do a critical thinking assessment at the beginning of their education and at the end of their degree. And they found that students who reported having negative diversity experiences, which really just means um, feeling discriminated against them some way or feeling uh, discluded from conversations, made them or resulted in at least an association between having lower critical thinking skills. So this is just an early signal that having good netiquette rules and having inclusivity can actually 
push people to become deeper thinkers and maybe just more engaged and maybe the deeper engagement is what leads to the critical thinking. The article I read actually didn't talk about the why this is true as much as, as the, as the results. So maybe next year I'll get more into that. And then another really interesting articles and the other two articles that, that I think people might be interested in reading after this is that, um, you know, critical thinking is thought of as kind of the, the rational, and a lot of times there's this distinction that's made between the rational and the emotional. And I read this really interesting article about the emotional entanglements, is what they called it, of uh, critical thinking with, with, with emotions. And especially when you are early in, in being willing to state claims based on evidence, and especially in a public forum. So they were talking about how when students were developing critical thinking skills, they would go home to their families and have these intellectual conversations and that they felt like, I used the word babbling at family events. So there's like kind of a, an emotional element to developing these skills that's often neglected. And like I said, I'm not gonna be able to talk about it that much because I decided to go into more of the practical end of uh, critical thinking at Ashford. So I'm not gonna talk about that um, as much, but if you wanna read the article, it's really interesting. So, one of the things, again, that I'm not going to talk about as much, but I think is really important, so I want to highlight this at the beginning, is the important, of course, design in creating what uh, Kassam and Gull called enabling environments. So they call disabling environments courses were, that are designed to encourage memorization, basic comprehension, and acquiring superficial knowledge. And we create more enabling environments, more you know, opportunities for critical thinking and critical exchange when we encourage students to apply knowledge or evaluate information or even create new knowledge. So part of the ways that we can create affordances for critical thinking is in creating um, discussion assignments and written assignments that really push students for critical reflection or evaluation of information. So you know, we want to try to encourage instructors to encourage a application evaluation, and hopefully that's built in the classroom, but even without, it's, it's about trying to push students to go deeper in their exploration of themes. So critical thinking just re involves kind of reflection and analysis and appraisal, and if instructors don't understand this, I think that sometimes they don't enforce it or don't encourage it. So I'm trying to work with my instructors to get them to think in those terms. And one of the ways that I see this is that instead of us being just disseminators or lecturers, we want to be mediators, which means we want to have more conversations and invite them to explore rather than just giving them the answer. So that's like a slightly different approach maybe than how some instructors have been trained to interact with students. So if you go to Ashford's um, general education competencies uh, site, it's written really small here, but I've enlarged it and highlighted some of the key terms. And it, it says that it's about skills and strategies for making decisions about what people ought to do and believe. And I think this really nicely connects to my first point about why critical and thinking is actually important for having a democracy. We have all, we all live in a society where we are given the opportunity to contribute in our own lives and the decisions that are made about the world around us. So it's important for us to develop these skills. So there are some, you know, keywords here, analysis, logic, and being able to identify fallacious thinking. Again, analysis and evaluation. Um, we want to be able to identify problems and use uh, appropriate sources to help us think through those problems. And here's an important part to me, and that is to explore solutions. And again, part of this is a, a part of course design. So if any of you out there have any say in your course design, and this is something I'm planning to do in my next course, is really try to focus more on giving students problems to solve and telling them that they have to use experts to help them in thinking through the solutions. 
So the second place, and I think you'll see a little bit of overlap, um, but some of it is a little more implicit to me than explicit. So instead of saying analysis, the, um, this is the language from the grading rubric on critical thinking, and this is the standardized grading rubric that's used in most discussion forms. I know some um, colleges might use slightly different language, um, but here we are assessing students on how they explore the ideas, thoughts, and elements of the topics that are raised in the discussions. They need to provide relevant evidence. And for me, this is one of the most important things. And one of the things that I'm constantly training students to do is that when they make a claim, they have to support it with some kind of evidence from some expert in that field. And that's why, at least in my course, it's important and I require students to use course material, which, you know, are people who are experts on the topic, to back them up. And so I like that, you know, the, they've, they've created a language that's pretty open so that it allows to, uh, instructors to focus on different elements. For me, the most important thing here is the use of information resources because that allows them to be more deep and to make logical connections and logical evidence that really helps them make those claims. And then finally, in the IQR, and that's the peer review that we use for instructors. It talks about how instructors need to challenge students to elaborate their thoughts, question their assumptions, examine biases, and defend their positions. And here's the overlap in the key words that I see. And I, I've put, I've color coded them so that you can see how they're happening in these three different areas. But for me, decisions should be based on relevant evidence. So I see a clear connection to there. This should be um, part of how they defend their decisions and their positions. And hopefully it will help reveal their assumptions. Um, and just one more I'll highlight here is the importance of using appropriate sources to support them. And again, this is about using relevant evidence and um, revealing biases, and I also should have made this in orange to, to help them defend their positions. So I see overlap between the three, and I um, am actually starting to encourage my instructors to read the general education learning outcomes and the competencies that I spoke to at the beginning so that they can have a better sense of what we're trying to accomplish, you know, as a team, Ashford is trying to achieve this kind of critical thinking as a competency that, and it's threaded through all of our courses. And one of the ways that it's, it's done is through the discussion boards and the discussion board rubrics. So moving on to like thinking about exactly where this happens. When I first started doing my uh, IQRs or peer reviews, I only looked at the discussion forums interactions when I was looking for evidence of how instructors foster critical thinking. Since then, I've become much more aware of the importance of other interactions that instructors have with students. And so one of the things that I look for is the type of um, notes that instructors leave on, on, on the feedback that they leave on papers and the overall grading feedback. So I started to think about grades themselves as being a type of claim that an instructor is making. And just like we're trying to train students to back their claims up with evidence, I'm starting to see the importance of instructors providing students with a grade and then providing them the evidence, which is their logical rationale for their grade. So this is also a justification for their assessment. So there's a quite a bit of overlap now in the way that I'm thinking about this in um, high expectations and critical thinking. And um, I also think, and I'll talk about this a little more, that it's important for instructors to ask leading questions to students to try to get them to think more deeply about the topic. So there's lots of ways that I see critical thinking as becoming a part of instructor interaction with students through their grading. I also think that instructors can do this in their announcements where they once again make a claim that's based on evidence. One of the things that is part of breadth that we discuss in relation to critical thinking is that it's about um, hearing a diverse range of voices about an issue so we can present them with articles and videos to help them 
um, understand the, the range of positions on a topic. And again, in terms of assessment, we need to use evidence-based grading. And um, we also, I mean, one of the things that, that I see pretty frequently in my assessment of instructors is that they often just give all of students perfect scores and critical thinking. And one of the things that I think is a um, important part of being a critical thinker is being able to distinguish between qualities. And when I see an instructor who just gives everyone perfect marks on critical thinking, it makes me question how much time they're spending with really thinking about how well the student's doing, but it also is a kind of disservice to the student because they're not instructing on them on how they can improve in that area. So for me, it's really important for us to give um, instructors that kind of feedback and encourage that. So, like I said, I primarily look for critical thinking in the discussion forums, in the announcements, and the grading feedback. And the two things that I frequently mention in my interaction with instructors when I give them their feedback on their performance is the depth of interaction they have with the students and how they encourage students and push them for deeper reflection. So it was mentioned in the very beginning in the Ashford's definition of critical thinking that it's about exploring ideas, thoughts, and elements of the assignment or prompt. I can't remember the language they used. So we need to, you know, instructors should ask themselves how they can encourage further deep further exploration of the themes through pushing students to go deeper, giving them additional um, articles they can use to think about other positions, um, asking them questions to, to nudge them to, to, to think about the clarity or the precision of the way that they're defining terms. So, you know, this is really to me about depth and engagement. And I have an announcement that I share with my students in week one about what I mean by engagement and depth. And I, um, so I think it's important for us to not just tell them to do things, but to show them how we can. So again, I, I kind of glossed over our interactions within the forums, but you know, it's important for us to be a good role model. And for me, that means also using sources to support us in the claims that we make. So, Instructors also need to kind of nudge students to tackle all of the elements that are required of them in meaningful ways. So here are just some examples of um, what I see as shallow critical thinking or shallow um, fostering of critical thinking. And you guys can just do the reverse to figure out what depth would mean. So a lot of times I see instructors just post simple replies where they don't have any questions, they, said they often will highlight something the student did or said, but not push them to go deeper. And um, with their grading food feedback, they'll often just give them simple praise and say, you know, this was great work. Even for A students, I like to try to push them to even deepen their knowledge more. I try to push them to reflect more on something they, they brought up. And maybe that's just a small point they made and I ask them to explore that, you know, to think about that more and how, how they can develop their ideas. So I'm constantly trying to push them to deepen their knowledge and understanding. And then um, finally, in the announcements, when instructors simply have a list of deadlines and there's no intellectual elaboration and challenge, then for me, that's, that's a lack of using that as an opportunity to push students to, to again, have deeper knowledge. And here's just a, one discussion post that I um, wrote to a student to try to illustrate what I mean here by more deep critical thinking. And here I'm going to highlight the importance of elaboration, evidence, inviting students to defend their position, and um, uh, pushing them to elaborate more again. So I said to a student, and this was um, in a discussion forum about culture and communication. And so I said, when you approach someone else, how do you first classify them in order to, to determine if you will face cultural barriers or not? So that's a way to pushing them to elaborate. And then in the next sentence, I say, Bevan and Soul discuss the risks of stereotypes, but we use these to make sense of the world. They are part of what psychologists call schemas, which are little mental shortcuts we make to classify the world. 
Without them, every time we encounter new people or new scenarios, we'd have to try to determine who they were. It would be overwhelming. People wouldn't even be able to identify you as delivery driver. So he was a delivery driver. So I'm pushing, I'm pushing those students to think more about the claim that he made. And he said stereotypes are bad, which is true. Stereotypes are typically bad, but they're also something that's hard to avoid in, in the ways that our minds are structured. So I also use evidence to support the claim that I'm making. And then I ask a question, you know, about stereotypes. And again, that's to deepen his um, defense of his position that stereotypes are bad. Then I ask him, you know, to think about nonverbal communication. And in the end, I ask him, you know, to think about how we can use cultural knowledge to improve as communicators. So these are the kind, this is the kind of post that is typical of me where I'm constantly pushing people to elaborate, deepen their reflection. So I'll just, um, let's see, end with a question and I'll look in the forum or someone, um, um, I'm just now going to the discussion forum, so um, I'll look over here. <laughs> but um, if anyone wants to talk or tell me, I'm curious, what is the primary things that you look for when you are assessing critical thinking either in students or instructors? And here I've written down some of the key things that I'm looking for. Again, I'm looking for citations because that is how they use relevant evidence. When they are asked to explore a topic that's about depth, and these are the key words that are in some of those definitions. Um, in instructors, I am constantly looking for how they challenge students. And again, this is about depth. I'm pushing them to question their assumptions, which is usually about evidence. And um, I'll just look over here in the um, forum. And if no one if no one shares anything, I'll just go to my next slide. <laughs> and I know we only have about a minute and a half, so. Okay, well, it's okay, because I have got the next slide, which basically is the answer, or at least one answer that I had. So I know I mentioned it before, but I will just highlight it again. Um, I think that some of the key ways that we can improve the ways that we foster critical thinking as instructors is to ask questions to deepen the reflection on key assignment elements. And I, I used to do, I, I have a habit, and I've been told that this is not the best practice, <laughs> on um, in-text grading feedback in that I typically ask them questions because most of the time what I'm doing though is like saying, signaling to them, you haven't gotten into this topic deep enough. And so I'm asking you this question to push you to do it. So now I've made the slight adjustment and instead of just asking the question, I followed up with, you needed to do this to do this more deeply. Push them to be more precise, encourage them to use experts to support them, and as I said before, um, I am now going to create assignments where we offer problem solving scenarios because I think that that is a great skill that we need to teach students. And the last thing I want to just say in the last 30 seconds is that, again, I assume that we learn through observation and so it's important for us to be good role models for students so that they can learn how to be critical, thinking themse critical thinkers themselves. Instructors are responsible for fostering critical thinking, and we as people who oversee instructors need to hold instructors accountable as well. So what I see this as ultimately is that we have a unified goal all working for Ashford, and Ashford has set these goals for themselves as creating critical thinkers. And so I want us all to just take a stake and see ourselves as um, enablers of critical thinking and um, yeah I think that you know we all just need to think about ways that we can hold our students accountable and also instructors accountable all right I went 30 seconds over so if there's any last questions um, well here in Iowa you still have a minute oh okay well if anyone else has any final questions um, you know I um, like with my my students, whenever I give them some kind of corrective about what it is that I want that maybe they didn't do, 
I like to show them through some kind of example so that they can see exactly what it is that I want. Mm -hmm. And I feel the same way about instructors. So anytime I offer an instructor criticism, I try to give them models of what it is that, that, that I'm looking for so that they can try to see where the gap might be between what they're doing and what I'm looking for. So that was kind of one of the goals of what I was here today to do. So hopefully some people saw some examples of that. And also, I think I kind of want to build a team mentality that this should all be kind of a unified goal of all of us as instructors, because I do honestly think that it's an important role that we play in creating thoughtful citizens. Thank you very much. You've given us a lot of great stuff to <laughs> Sorry, I know I packed no, it in. I'm awesome. not used to 30 minute presentations. I know, I know. We were talking about that earlier. The other thing that occurs to me as you talk as you're talking about things to work into classes, you know, for all of the and I'm looking at who's here, we have some awesome instructors that have come to this presentation. If you all ever have ideas of problem based situations or other things to work into the curriculum, please fill out curriculum feedback forms. Those are not just for broken links and inaccessible things. And, you know, as we design and evolve our courses and strive for the kinds of things that Dr. Ketchman has been talking about, you know, your insights are all very welcome. All right. Well, thank you everyone for coming. Thank you so much. And everybody enjoy the rest of your TLC and have a great day. Yeah. And thanks for the link that someone sent. I will look at it. I didn't, I wasn't able to monitor the, the forum, but I will look at them after this and um, copy and paste them. I thank you for it. Thank you so much. Everybody. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.